now what we're going to do is we're going to dissolve the corn sugar the recipe wanted me to do. Now, like again, we're just we're just brewing, and I'm following the instructions right here. Okay, and this is usually the first step I do. Uh, right, you can see right here the what we're making. You just export stop. We're gonna make a coffee, but we're gonna kick the alcohol up. I'm just following instructions, and it wanted two and a half pounds of corn sugar. It said brewer sugar, which is corn sugar. Now I'm adding some light malt extract. I got 11 ounces here. Why did I choose 11 ounces? That's what I had left in the one pack. That's it. And again, yeast eat sugars which produce alcohol and CO2. Okay? So the more sugars you have, the more alcohol you can have as long as your yeast don't die from too much alcohol because they can. So the first thing I'm doing is I got water here. It's just at a simmer. Okay? It's, it's just barely getting bubbles. I'm going to add this in. Now the reason I add this in a little quicker than normal, you can see how fast I did that. You see that gunk on the side? It, this stuff is so fine that it uh, cakes up immediately. So I want to get this mixing before it sticks. And after this, the reason I'm boiling this, in the amount of water, doesn't matter. You're going to end up with five gallons at the end. Uh, the reason I do this at the beginning is you can add the water when you're adding it to the bucket, but I like to make sure it's completely dissolved. Now, this is the first step I usually do, but I dissolve it at the end. I mean, excuse me, reboil it at the end. And all I'm doing is I'm adding my two and a half pounds of corn sugar here. And I gotta turn this off. I better get some handles on here. These are the kind that you can take them, take them on and off. Sorry if that was in your way. Because uh, this can boil immediately. Immediately, immediately. If you wonder what's going on here, uh, I just got an old percolator here. I'm just making some coffee. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I just like, the, I like percolator coffee. A uh, trick I do, I learned in the Army, inside your percolator cup itself, uh, throw a couple eggshells in there. And uh, that gets rid of a little bit of the bitterness that you, extra bitterness you get from boiling. But all I'm doing is I'm waiting for this to completely dissolve. I do not need to bring this up to a boil now because it's already dissolved. That was it. Because what I'm going to be doing is when I add this to my fermenting bucket, I'm reboiling this to make sure it's 100% sanitized because we want it sanitized. I'll boil it for about two minutes just to make sure everything in all the critters, if there is any, and there's dead. But that's it. That's all I do. I'm just going to set it to the side. That's all there is to get your sugars ready. You saw that. Again, you can add it straight to the bucket to your hot water you're going to add. But I find I get a little better results with this, especially when I'm adding a little extra. That's it. Uh, we'll uh, get stuff rearranged and we'll start the next step. Okay, we're going to go over a little sanitizing real quick. This is my fermenting bucket right here. Uh, let me grab this over here. I forgot it. Sorry about that, guys. So, if you have a fermenting bucket, you generally have a spigot down at the bottom. That spigot down there Make sure you turn it sideways so you don't crack it. Uh, you'll forget like me and break a whole bunch of them. So what I do is I just fill it up, add some of the star sand, one ounce per five gallon, just like it says, and I put my stuff inside. Now don't forget the lid. Okay. Right now I have uh, the hydrometer, and you do not need one of these when you're starting out. It's to find the gravity of your water so you can find out how much alcohol is in your beer. And inside there I got my stirring spoon too. And I just put this in here to make it easier. I got my airlock valve, I'll show you later, and my thermometer just to make sure it's not too hot when I add the yeast. So the only, that's about it. The only couple tips I can say is make sure you turn that sideways. And wherever you put this, put a towel next. Can you bring stuff out? You're gonna make it dripping wet. So don't rub it on there because you'll unsanitize it, but just hold it over for a second, it'll drip you'll be fine now remember there's a difference between cleaning and sanitizing that's a big deal so uh just uh 
remember that but that's it for sanitizing and anything that touches your work that's your your uh, basically your stuff when you put in your fermenter and before you put in your fermenter is has to be sanitized after the boil before the boil you're fine because the boiling will take care of it so that's it for this step okay we're at the next step now the only thing I did is I got this boiling and I got this in really hot water the can now I did take the top off and put I, this this white lid I took off I can't open the top and put this lid back on I just know it's a lot easier than trying to take it off when it's really really hot now I do not have this sitting directly on the bottom of the pan I just crinkled up a piece of tin foil about that big it's probably about that thick and just set it on that okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is our sugar mixture that we did I'm gonna put in the boiling water to bring that back up to a boil and here's where it gets easier and I have two and a half gallons of water I brought up to a boil right here two and a half gallons Okay, it's that easy. And these are the sanitized spoons. Now it is going to boil again, so I probably didn't have to, but hey, very safe and sorry. That's all there is to that. What I'm going to do now is bring this back up to boiling and add that. So as soon as this comes back up to boiling in a couple minutes, I'll get back with you. Okay guys, it's been about four or five minutes and this just started to come up to a rolling boil. So now we're gonna add our uh, extract kit. Take that out here. Take the lid off carefully because that stuff's like napalm right now. And I got a nice little glove here. Just to hold on to it because you want to stir as you add it because you do not want it to stick to the bottom. Now, this does, this can overflow pretty quick. You can turn the heat off if you want to and turn the heat back on. But that is, uh, that is, up, that is up to you. I'm just gonna get my spatula to get all the goodness out of here. Now I'm just stirring this in here to get the stuff off the spatula. The syrup, that's good. And you can see in the can there's almost nothing left in there. So now all we have to do is bring this up to a boil. That way we know for sure it's sanitized. And we'll pour it in the bucket. I'm probably not going to show you that step because all I'm really doing is going to be taking this out of here, emptying the, well first emptying the bucket of all the sanitized solution, make sure everything is sealed up, and then I'm going to pour this directly into the bucket. Now, remember when I added that extra dried malt extract, not the corn sugar, the other dried malt extract? You can buy brewer's grain, you know, malted grain, and it's cracked and you can get that at the brew store online and you can soak that at a certain temperature for a certain amount of time it does the exact same thing it'll add a little more body and flavor now adding the dried malt extract is almost the same thing and it does give it a little more depth of character a richer taste than just the straight can itself so that's another reason besides the alcohol gives it a whole better body and feel and everything so this is probably just going to take less than a minute to boil and then after I pour it in the bucket I'll pick up with you because you guys don't need to see me pouring the, in the bucket that's pretty self-explanatory see you in a minute okay guys it started boiling almost instantly after I took the turn the camera off so I just poured it in here okay uh, emptied the stuff poured the stuff in here and 
Now what you want to do is this batch makes six gallons of water or six gallons. Now it says five to six gallons. You don't need to know what this means but if you're shooting for a specific gravity that's how you can determine the water. If not basically I'm really generalizing here and there's other factors but if you have less water there'll be a little higher alcohol. There's other factors to concern there but at generally. So if you want a little higher, go to five or six. Uh, I have a mark on my bucket right over here to my five gallon mark. So this is water I boiled yesterday and it just had it in the fridge after it boiled. So and this is so it's cold water and all this is does is it helps cool it down faster. And that almost brought me up to five. Right now I'm about five and a half right there. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. Now this was the bucket, you know, the lid that was in the sanitizing solution. Uh, what I'm going to do is partially cover it just to make sure it doesn't, uh, uh, stuff doesn't float in it. I'm going to wait for this to get down to below 70 degrees. Now you can put this inside of a ice bath in your sink. It'll go a lot faster. Add in that cold water, this will take about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm fine with that. So that's it. I'll get back with you as soon as this gets down to temperature. Okay, everybody, we're at the next step here. This here now is 72 degrees right here. That's good. That's good. And mine said 65 to 70. I'm right there. Basically, you want a 100% below 80 for ales. No ifs, ands, or buts. If you're going loggers, I'd go down even, I'd get down low 60s. So, uh, but there's other ways I'll show you my next video. Remember, there's three ways to make a beer. I'll show you the next way, or three main ways, I should say. The next one uh, isn't hard, it just takes longer, okay? And, uh, but you have a lot more flexibility. Each one I'm going to show you, each three, as you go, you get more flexibility and more. Uh, overall control over everything in there okay if my head's half cut off I apologize about that because this is way more important than this ugly mug right here uh, so this is at the proper temperature uh, I did already but what you want to do and this is the sanitized solution is you want to stir this okay for about five minutes and then switch directions when you're stirring so give it everything swirling in one way, stop it and go the other. What that's doing is you're adding oxygen to your uh, wort right here. You need oxygen for the yeast to kick off and go on. After that, oxygen is the enemy of the beer. You're going to get all flavors. You do not, after this is going and the yeast is in, you do not stir it, you do not shake this at all during the whole fermenting time. You don't. So just uh, stir it. You want to get as much oxygen as you can in this. Now if you're in a glass carboy, you can get a cap and shake it and that goes real quick, real easy. So, uh, and you can also get air stones and stuff like that to add it in too. But uh, you, you want to make sure air on the side of stirring it more than what you think, okay? So I'm pretty much done with that. Now, your yeast. This is that starter on the other video I made, okay? I had this off for about the last 10 minutes, and you see how it is separated. All that lighter stuff at the bottom, those are your yeasts. I'm not worried about adding all of this to my wort. This won't change the flavor. If you're worried about, if you're doing a real light, delicate beer, and you're worried about this changing any flavors, you see how it's separated like that? What you do is you pour it real slow and you'll get the top and not the bottom. But if you do that, you want to let this sit for about an hour first and it'll really separate out. Now, if you're doing a really big beer, you know, a big, huge, big alcoholic beer, you're going to want to make two starters. What you're going to want to do is, exactly like my other video, then what you're going to want to do is make a whole nother batch of the this stuff here without yeast 
just like I showed you in the video, bring it down in temperature, but don't add it to this. What you do is you turn this off for an hour, let it go down, pour off the top, put it back on, then the other starter mixture you make, pour it in here, and the yeast in here will repopulate that so you'll get a double batch. But all you do here is swirl it to make sure it's all in solution. You can smell that yeast, that boy, that stuff smells good. And uh, I'm just making sure there's no yeast stuck to the bottom. You could keep it stirring on here the whole time if you want. I stopped it so you could see the separation there. And again, you don't have to do this. You can sprinkle your yeast right on top like the instructions say. But uh, I have this, so I'll do it. And if you have a chance, just do it in a mason jar. You'll be happier, like I said, in the long run. So then we just pour it in. And I forgot to tell you, I used a magnet to take the uh, stirring stick out. I apologize about that. I didn't show that to you. Okay, we're just going to give this one last stir. That's it. Before I put the cover on, I want to show you what this looks like. This is a stout, remember. And that's what it looks like right on top there. And by uh, probably five or six hours from now, this is going to be bubbling up here and this will all be full of, you know, basically bubbles and sludge and everything like that. So, uh, but that's a good thing. Okay, let's go back here and set this camera back down. If you're wondering why I got a fan over here, uh, right there, we're in that ice storm in December of 13 here in uh, North Texas. And we heat our house with a wood-burning stove. And that fan here actually is blowing heat to the other side of the house to, uh, to get some heat to that part of the house. Because we still haven't turned the heater on, so it's kind of cool in the house. Okay, get your lid. Put it on tight. If you can't do that with your hand, get a rubber mallet. And double check. Now, here's the... Air, whoop, I forgot a major step. I'm sorry about this, people. I gotta get this off without spilling. Just peel it off real slow. We forgot to take the gravity right here. So, uh, let me check this, make sure everything's good. Yeah, we're okay. So, you just put this in. And it's gonna bounce a little bit. I'll show it to you here. You can see. You can see those markings. You can see how it goes up and down. You just wait for it to settle. And you find out where it's at. And we are at, you see that right? The marking right there? We are at the 1.0. Five O. So uh, that's our starting gravity. Double check that. We're actually at one point oh four eight. So we're almost at five O. So one point oh four eight. And you want to write that down. Because you won't have your other number for a week. What you do is you take your starting gravity, subtract your finished gravity, and put that in a tiny, easy formula, and it tells you your alcohol by volume. Okay. Now, let's get the airlock going. Just put this in here like that. There's the rubber stopper. Do this so I can see. I apologize. But reaching over there again. You get two more pieces. I'm just using the sanitizing solution. Up to my line. I put that in here. Actually, just a hair more. There we go. Put the cap on. And what this does is, like I explained in the other thing, is it'll go up and the air can go out because there's an outward pressure on that, but nothing can go in. Put that cap up there. 
that's it. We are good to go. We put this in a dry, cool location in a temperature that whatever your yeast wants, and you just leave it sit there for a week. Generally, it's about a week, uh, but uh, until there's almost no activity up here in the airlock. So that's it. Uh, I will make another video when we come back to add the candy sugar and we can it. But that's it for brewing your beer. It's that easy. This kit makes good beer. There's different flavors and it is super simple. This is a great way to start. This is pretty close to like your Mr. Beer kits except that Mr. Beer kits makes shorter, you know, smaller kits. And this makes about two cases of beer. If two cases is too much, get together with a friend. Do it together, have a good time, and you each get a good case of beer. That's it. Any questions, leave them below. I thank you, everybody, for watching this video. Have a great day.